pop off the fuse cover usefully. It tells you exactly what fuses do what, and the fuse for the fan was perfectly fine. So I have another solution, which is a jumper wire. The one in the new radiator I've fitted doesn't appear to work. The old one also didn't appear to work. It's a few days later and I have some good news. So that in there is the new switch I ordered that's dead. Uh, after a bit of back and forth with the seller, they agreed to do a refund, which is good. There's a little jumper wire. And here is my new switch. Now this one does work. And I did test it. And this is an old Intermotor branded one. So previously I'd bought a brand new switch. This one's more likely new old stock. It, uh, it tests properly in boiling water. You can actually hear it make a very, very slight click as the switch inside engages. I did try and record that, but um, I was using the hob and I've accidentally melted the covering on this wire, so that's why there's no footage of that. I'm now going to quickly swap this one onto the car, now that I know the switch actually works. And to do that, you very quickly pull the old one out and very quickly shove the new one in and you don't lose very much coolant. And Peter provided me with a new one of these, the one I took out of the radiator. One of these plastic tabs just snapped clean off, which was a bit annoying. This locks everything in and just stops everything leaking and coming out. And just like that it's in and I'm now covered in antifreeze. It's just a push fit. And then just twist around there and locks in place. Easy peasy. The other thing Peter provided me with was a good used cap. You can see there's a tiny bit of corrosion on the spring there just from it being not on something for very long. Uh, this actually does seal properly, which the cap that it replaced didn't. So that was a nice little free bonus. So I'm now going to top this up with some fresh coolant so it's up to the right level and then we'll give this a test run. Just taking it around the block and the temperature is holding steady just there which is exactly where it was when I got the fan running all the time and that looks pretty good. It's never gone above the half gauge even when I've been stuck in traffic so I'm happy about that. I think the fan only comes on when the engine's running. Just have to wait for the fan to kick in not quite hot enough. Which it might just have done. Looks like something somewhere is temperamental. The fan has kicked in, but not until the I'm blooming up lights come on, so. Man, be able to see it, but you can certainly hear the fan is running. I'm not 100% sure what's going on there. So it might just be the connectors here are just a bit dodgy. They seem to work when I'm on the move, so I don't mind. Spent a little bit of time having a look around the engine bay. I now know what works and what doesn't. So I know the fan switch over here works perfectly fine. That's not an issue. So I know the problem is somewhere in this section. 
and I was having a look and I noticed there's a bit of a split there and I think when I'm losing the connection just at the moment it's that split there now the other fan switches I bought are definitely dead I've tested them separately alongside the one that's currently fitted and they're definitely definitely dead so I know that the first problem was a fan switch issue now I know the second problem is that little exposed wire there ideally that means rewiring it and I don't have the materials right now so I'm going to plug this back in and we shall see what happens Fan should be coming on somewhere around about now, looking at the gauge. We'll just have to wait and see. Okay, it's now half gauge, the fan should definitely be on. The multimeter said the fan switch is working. Plug it back in, it's working fine. So I think the problem now is just a dodgy connection or a dodgy wire like I showed just there. So for now I just have to keep an eye on the temperature gauge I think. So as you can see, because the fan wasn't able to kick in due to that poor connection, it's got a bit hot. But the fan will bring that down fairly rapidly. Stop working again. You can hear the go the coolant just burbling and guggling, so. I think the problem is probably down to this little wire here and there's some electrical tape on here as well so I'm going to have to investigate this. For now, because I know this switch works, I'm going to put the jumper wire in here and then when I've got the materials to do it I'll fix this properly. Unfortunately, just at the moment I don't have the materials I need to do that so I'll have to leave it for now. Okay, I'm super confused about this. Engine isn't running, the fan is. My jumper wire isn't in. All I did was I unplugged the wires, turned one connector around and plugged them back in again. As in, they're both pointing the, the same way with a big lock. That's the only thing I've changed. Taking the cap off made no difference. I did burp some air out of the system, which I didn't know was in there, but the top and bottom hose on the radiator are both equal temperatures, i.e. too hot to touch. The whole radiator is a nice even temperature. So I don't know with this one. It's a little bit strange. But it's now coming on without the engine running as it should. So I'll keep an eye on it because this is probably some weird intermittent problem where I have to wait for something to break properly. But it's working now. And that's what matters. Suppose that's fixed. Kind of. This is the problem when you get into running an older car like this regularly. Part supply can be unpredictable. I could get the part I needed for this very easily, but it took me until I found the third switch before I found one that worked. And the price didn't make any difference on that either. Bearing in mind the one that came with the radiator was free. The first new one that I bought was I think eight pounds, and the second new one that I bought was I think six pounds. Although the second new one was a, a new old stock item as far as I can tell. 
What an annoying job. But that's the problem with old cars. There's lots of annoying jobs. I did mention that the wiring looked a bit dodgy on that plug, and I still think it does. But I don't think that's the cause of the problem, because if you plug the jumper cable in, it works reliably every single time. That kind of suggests that the issue is more to do with the connection between the fan switch and the wiring on the car, so that could be, it's a poor connection. Uh, so I might just need to tighten up the connectors a little bit. It could also be an intermittent fault with the fan switch, it being a, a fully mechanical type. Um, there's not a lot that can go wrong with them, but it might just be that it needs a few heat cycles before it becomes reliable and starts operating as it should. I'm also trusting that it hasn't been used before that it is new. It did look new, and the box it was in looked like new old stock, so that's an item that's been on the shelf a long time just hasn't sold, so it's effectively new, but it's old. Um, yeah, I'm just going to have to drive around this one. For now, I'll leave the fan switch plugged in. If I start getting a repeat of the overheating problem, I'll investigate further. When I'm actually driving the car, the fan is coming on and off, as it should as far as I can tell. The temperature is staying nice and stable. It's not getting hot in traffic. It just seemed to be when I got home, I had the car sat at idle, and I got the camera out to actually show you what had been done, that the problem surfaced. So we'll just have to see how that one progresses. For now, we'll call it done and I'll move on to the next jobs on the car. The next one is probably an oil change. Got a new filter, got a new rocker gasket to go on. I can adjust the tappets while I'm at it. They're, I think they're a little bit loose, they're a little bit rattly even for an A-series. And we'll work our way through the various jobs. Um, I have my MOT shortlist now, so I know that I do need to address some of the braking and some of the bodywork. Thank you for tuning in and catching some more updates on the Maestro and leaving those comments and likes and sharing the video and all that stuff. It's all good. Hopefully the next job I undertake will be a little bit less frustrating. Uh, it might not be, you never know. There's still lots to do, so there's still lots to come on this car. We'll get there.